Hi, I'm Bill Kinley. Uh, I'm Chief Executive of Group M here in Ireland. And I've been with Group M, uh, which is owned by WPP since the very start. So WPP was set up in 1985. I was part of a company that was bought by WPP back in 1985. And then I worked with the company all the way through five different companies across two different marketplaces. And currently I came back to Ireland to set up the Mindshare business in 1999. We set up Group M in 2003 and I assumed the role of, of Chief Executive. So Group M is uh, the holding company for three client-facing media agency brands, which is Mindshare, Mediacom and Wavemaker. Uh, and what we do essentially, we work in the advertising business, but we're on the media side of the advertising business. So what we do is we place the ads with TV, radio, TV stations, radio stations, newspapers, digital, cinema, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we spend all the money, which sounds more glamorous than it is, and essentially then we have uh, we, we report back to the clients on how that money is spent to make sure we reach the right people and we reach them efficiently and effectively. And in terms of size and scale, Group M is about 170 million uh, euro in, t in 2018. Um, which means about roughly about one in every four ads that consumers see in Ireland are placed by Group M. If we went back a few years, uh, we had a very inflated marketplace along with the Celtic Tiger inflation that we had uh, in the marketplace back in 2007. So in 2008 there was a massive drop, about a 30% drop in terms of spend. And since then we've seen modest changes, some, some declines, some increases. In 2016, 17 versus 16, we saw a 3.5% reduction and that reduction came primarily from TV, so there was definitely a loss in confidence in TV in 2017. Uh, and I think clients started to sort of realise that they made a mistake and come back then in 2018. So 2018, we saw an increase in TV and 2019 an increase. So t TV is such a big part of the marketplace here in Ireland that if TV has a good or a bad year, it does reflect in terms of the overall uh, performance in the marketplace. And in 2017, the TV marketplace dropped off, which meant that the total marketplace dropped. 2018, it came back in a big way. Uh, and 2019 is forecast for more increase in TV. Well, I think, I think in a nutshell, TV works and it's been proven over many, many years with many, many studies that TV delivers value and delivers return on investment. Um, and I think marketers are realising that now. It's, you know, it's, it's probably the one medium that gives you both reach and engagement. And uh, it's the one medium that, that clients constantly come back to us and say, when they're on TV, they can see a tangible difference in their profile, their awareness, their sales, or whatever measurement they're using. Uh, well, I, I, I think what you find is that um, the, the copy, uh, advertising copy is being made centrally because clients are, are looking for economies of scale. So they might be making one piece of copy that goes across the whole of Europe or indeed goes across the whole of the globe. And TV tends to be a lead medium in many, many uh, territories. So TV tends to be an area where they, they have an ad, they may need to change the voiceover on that ad or change the text on that ad, but it's a strong ad. So it, it forms the basis and the bedrock of a lot of campaigns. And as I said, it's a, it's a strong medium that engages, reaches a, a, a lot of people and engages with those people and in a, an environment that is a quality environment in terms of the, the, the programming and the editorial. In radio, we've noticed that household services, which includes telecommunications and retail, are two areas that have, have, have dropped off. Um, and indeed, motors has been a, a, an area, a big area, and that, that, that category particularly has been under pressure over the past couple of years and is coming under increasing pressure now with Brexit and, and sterling exchange rates and cars coming in from other markets and so on. Um, the radio marketplace, interestingly, has two sides to it. It's got the local advertising side and the national advertising side. We just in our booklet measured the uh, national advertising side and what you've got there is um, a lot of clients who have, have looked at radio versus other media and are seeing better value elsewhere. Yeah, I, I think in terms of newspapers, we're going to continue to see decline. I think that's just a, a factor. You know, if you look at, you talk to any of in terms of recruitment any young people they just don't read newspapers and I don't think we're ever going to get them to read newspapers it's, it's not in it's not in their lifestyle it's not going to change so I think newspapers are going to see a continual decline so I think the challenge will be how we switch people from a print version of a publication to a digital version of a publication and I think the the, the smart publishers are the ones who are doing that are migrating their audience over from a print version to a digital version when you switch over from a, in terms of advertising from a print version to a digital version yes you've got open markets uh, you know exchange rates so as a, as a consequence 
you have advertising that is going to go out and be, be, be cheaper, be on the open marketplace and be cheaper. So I think in terms of partnerships and sponsorships and, and uh, sponsoring editorial uh, sections in terms of a digital publication, that's where I think you can get greater return on the, on the, from the advertising investment. I think it's a combination of things in terms of outdoor. Um, the, the situation is there's more people on the streets, so I think outdoor is a, is a strong medium in terms of reaching more people as, as, as commuting times increase and there's, there's more traffic. Um, secondly, in terms of 2018 in particular, we had a very, very good uh, weather across the summer, so there's more people out and about, and I think uh, outdoor advertising had a good year as a result of that. And then uh, the, the digital investment into outdoor, may, up upgrading the sites, making them more digital friendly, has been a huge factor as well. So I think it's been it's been strong and consistently strong. And again, for certain sectors, it works really well. For for food and drink, it works really well. For retail, it works really well. For a media and entertainment sector, it works extremely well. Um, but the challenge for outdoor will be when we get to the back end of 2019, when the new legislation comes in about alcohol, because uh, that's a big sector for outdoor. So that's going to certainly affect their ability to continue to grow in 2020. So the shift to digital has transformed our business, particularly over the past eight to 10 years. Uh, and it's changing at such a, a, a fast paced rate that it continues to transform our business. And it's really evolving and changing every six months. The biggest change recently over the past couple of years has been the move to programmatic advertising. So programmatic is where you're dealing in real time, a computer dealing with a computer and, and uh, serving an ad in real time to a, a real audience being measured live as it's, as it's consuming. Um, and that's been a, bigger, a big growth area of our business. So most of our dis what was display business, which was placed banners or skyscrapers with, with websites, is now done programmatically. So it's, 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 uh, it's done uh, computer to computer. Um, that's probably been the biggest uh, change. And then growing the what we call the partnership side of our business, where we're dealing with people like RTE or, or, or Daily Mail Group or uh, Maximum Media and we're doing partnerships that sort of take uh, editorial and content and package that for a client or create specific content for a client. Programmatic is a challenge for, for advertising agencies because a number we've seen a number of clients globally and regionally move that, that business in-house but what we would certainly argue is that if you're buying across a, a variety of different genres and different uh, sectors you will have a better handle on the marketplace than if you just buy in one in one particular sector. We've seen this in the search side of the business as well with Google, that when clients take it in-house, if you're just focused on one sector, you don't have an overall picture of the marketplace and you can't benchmark where value exists.